is this like home base for training for yeah. sub kings? This is where training's been based the last two months, even December was here all the time. Um, and then this whole training camp from Jan has been basically in the garage, um, seeing as I'm a bit of a nomad at the moment. <laughs> but um, I must also just give a shout out to Richie Kwan and uh, Norman Vessels and Warren King for letting me drop in at FFM. The sessions there have been really awesome and helped me so much. So those guys are absolutely legends. So really grateful to them for that. See that uh, Velcro game, bro? <laughs> it's going to come off now, eh? you know that. <laughs> Here, there, all the way through. Honestly, like two meters of Velcro <laughs> and a whole tube of contact adhesive. I even, I didn't have gloves. I didn't know you were supposed to use gloves. <laughs> so I actually, I don't know if my parents must have moved it, but I put socks on my hands. Black mat of the garage been going. The black mat started in the, the first apocalyptic lockdown. Uh, level four. Myself, <laughs> Justin, no. Manny Majola, legend, a coach, a lockdown yeah. coach. You know the guy Marcel who were here five days a week. Yeah. Two hours, garage session, cold pool afterwards. <laughs> That's when Manny got into the whole cold pool thing by the way. <laughs> And uh, it was awesome. It took us to a next level. I think um, Manny helped us so much. Not just on the mats as well, like just off the mats, how to carry yourself, like with jits and such a beautiful perspective on it. It was, it was lovely. Yeah. yeah, lockdown was the best thing that happened to my jiu jitsu, man. <laughs> of the lineup for WTA bro I think it's incredible um, I think you've got basically like five really established guys who have been competing at the highest level yeah, for so long um, Ching, Brandon Newman, uh, Jamie Gemmel, Reese, Sindile and Desley are savages been in this for so long been doing it for so long, like hard yards, and when I started, those go, those are the guys I wanted seminars from, man. So incredible. Then you've got Jordan, who's probably the favourite on form. Um, he's been absolutely tearing it up locally and went overseas and represented. Then you've got uh, Michael Block, who's a dark horse. People mustn't sleep on that guy. I've rolled with him at Henzo's, could rate him highly, and. Also been doing it forever and so good. So then you've got the underdog <laughs> here um, training in my garage. But and I think it's a great mixture stylistically of grapplers. 
how do you how do you deal with the fact that I mean you mentioned Jordan I mean I don't think if anyone's watching Jiu Jitsu they know the history between the two of you but something I've thought about a lot is that everybody on that roster kind of knows each other pretty well dealt with each other trained with each other competed against each other how do you think that that aids in like everyone's preparation to get used to dealing with each other um, I think people's games are growing all the time and people are evolving all the time so I mean I've rolled with everyone on the list or in the roster and every time I've rolled them things have been different so I think it just it's going to depend who can implement or depend on who can implement their style on the day that's what's going to be the biggest factor and um, I don't think it's a case of people knowing each other too well I think it's actually going to benefit people because it's going to make for exciting jets not just like stall out ground for points i think people are really going to hunt the subs insinuation to being an underdog how do how do you feel in the approach of being in the underdog on there um fine i think it's most importantly for me and uh, when it comes to competition is the battle with myself and what i mean by that is like mentally i've always struggled with self-belief and self-confidence when it comes to stuff like this and every competition is a is an opportunity to fight those demons so I know that you know a lot of people also struggle with that. No one really talks about it if you see me as like a good athlete or whatever. It's just a macho approach, but you know like insecurities are real, and um, it's not an excuse to be the underdog. You know you really have to rise up, and as long as I can be authentic in my approach and my rolling, then I'm like you know it's not a it's not a negative tag. There's no negative connotation. That's just a fact and I'm looking forward to showing that you know the underdog can maybe bite a little bit. <laughs> 